there friends! If you're new to my channel, welcome! My name is Nicole and I'm here today with actually not a theater video, which is most of what I've been doing lately, but a book haul for you guys. I've been in London for a month and I've already bought way too many books in the last bit of September and the early bit of October, but I wanted to share them with you in case you have any interest in them and I'm sure a lot of these will be featuring in favorites videos over the next month, so let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm not including books in this that I've bought to get for Christmas, like you might be able to see in the background, I don't know. I have back here the house editions in Ravenclaw and Slytherin of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, but those are actually Christmas presents that I'm just using as decor. So the first book that I bought is All That She Can See by Carrie Hope Fletcher. Now Carrie Hope Fletcher is one of my favorite actresses, YouTubes, and authors. Really, I would love her books even if I didn't know who she was, and I'm so excited because she just announced a new book that she's working on that's actually set in the theater, so I can't wait for that. But this book, um, the thing on here says every little thing she bakes is magic, and so it basically has to do with baking and kind of magical um, realism, which I really like. I, I think that's the correct phrase for it, but it's kind of where magic is in like a modern real life setting, which I really enjoy. I loved Carrie's first novel. I loved her kind of self-help book. I don't know if that's what you would call it. Um, All That I Know Now. So I was waiting to get this so that I could buy it over here instead of having to pay the shipping to ship it from here to the US. And I'm definitely going to get reading on this as soon as I finish Hamlet. I've been reading Hamlet for what feels like forever, literally since I got here. I read, um, Murder on the Orient Express and the playing over, and then I started reading Hamlet as soon as I was here, and it's just taking me, I mean, obviously, like, Shakespearean prose takes a while to get through, so it's just taking me a while. The next two books are actually history books. This one I picked up at Kensington because it was on sale, and it's called The Young Victoria by Alison Plowden, and it's kind of about Victoria's early life, her ascending to the throne at just the age of 18. I'm assuming it'll have, yeah, it'll have some stuff about her marriage to Prince Albert in it, and I'm really obsessed with Queen Victoria. She's my favorite historical figure probably of all time, and I particularly love learning about her early life, especially now that I have my membership so I can go to Kensington whenever I want. So I am really excited to read some of this because she grew up at Kensington, so I'm hoping to learn even more about the palace through it. The next history book that I picked up is called Dickens England Life in Victorian Times. Now I picked this up actually the day after I went to the Charles Dickens Museum and I found this in a used bookstore for just four pounds so I thought that it would be really nice to read it, learn a little bit more about uh, life in Victorian England. I obviously have a thing for Victorian England but there's so many sites here that have to do with that that I thought it would be nice to learn some more. The last two books that I have to share with you, it's all isn't really that big, I guess it's just a handful of books. I didn't want to show you my German textbook. I bought that because I'm taking a German class now, but I didn't think that was that interesting. But I finally got two of these Penguin English Library editions of books. I'm obsessed with these. If you know the booktuber Lucy the Reader, she did a whole like collection video of all the ones that she has, and I want an entire collection of them. It's so hard not to buy the Pride and Prejudice um, copy of in this range every time I go into a Waterstones, and I'm gonna be honest, I might do it before I end up back in the States because I don't think you can get them in the States, at least I haven't found them yet, but what I got is Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. Uh, as I said, I went to the Dickens Museum, so I wanted to actually read some Dickens because all I've ever read is an excerpt of the Pickwick Papers, um, A Christmas Carol, and Part of Hard Times. Um, Please don't tell my teacher that for the class I was supposed to read Hard Times for. But it says that it is about, it kind of is between Paris and London um, during like the late 1700s. And it says, in the midst of the chaos, two men, an exiled French aristocrat and a dissolute English lawyer are both redeemed and condemned by their love for the same woman. So that sounds really cool to me. I was like, I really want to, you know, know more Dickens. So I thought I will read this and watch some movie adaptions of Great Expectations, and that'll help get me up to speed on my Dickens. And then I also bought uh, Wilkie Collins' The Woman in White. Now what's interesting is I actually also watched The Invisible Woman, which is a film about Charles Dickens and the affair that he had in his later years. It sounds like I'm really obsessed with Dickens, I realize that. I just don't know much about him, so I wanted to learn. 
but in it, Wilkie Collins is actually a character. I didn't know that he was friends with Dickens. And I didn't know this also says it's the first and greatest of the best-selling Victorian thrillers known as sensation novels. Now why I want to read this massive book here is because there's a musical adaption of it with music by Andrew Lloyd Webber that is coming to London at the Charing Cross Theatre next month. I actually have a ticket to opening night, which is really exciting, and it's got three of my favorite actors in it, Anna O'Byrne, a, and Carolyn Matland and Chris Peluso. So I thought it might be nice since I don't know anything about the show to read the novel of it instead of trying to like listen to the music so that I can have an idea of the plot um, but also be able to hear the music for the first time there. So it'll probably take me a while to get through this but I definitely plan on seeing it at least a couple of times and I'm really excited for this. I also like want to read more Victorian literature. I know this is uh, Victober and the booktuber and I don't know, book influencer community where you're supposed to read Victorian literature, so I'm looking forward to this one. All right, that is it. I also have picked up, as I said, these Harry Potter house editions, and I picked up Jim Chapman's book 147 Things, but I'm not supposed to look at it because I'm just bringing it back for my mom to give me for Christmas because it's a lot cheaper for me to buy it here and bring it back than for her to pay to ship it over there. So those are the books that I've recently got. I just thought this would be like a really nice little bonus video kind of in addition to all of the theater content that I've been doing. Let me know if you guys have read any of these or what you're reading right now. Also, if you have any recommendations, really what I like is um, historical fiction, history books and biographies, and classics. So if you have anything in that realm, do let me know. And let me know if you've read some Dickens, and if so, like what your favorite is, because I want to get into it and don't really know where to go after The Tale of Two Cities. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below and click the little bell icon, which will send you notifications whenever I upload, which is typically once or twice a week on Wednesdays and uh, either Saturday or Sunday. I'm still trying to get a schedule down because my schedule right now overall is kind of in flux. But yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this and I'll see you soon. Bye!